I'm gonna take a shot on this one. You're gonna see fear. I'm buying everybody around on this! Oh my god! Well, welcome back to our Bar Talk segment for Big Apple Hockey, where we gauge our confidence on NHL topics based on our choice to drink. Do you need a beer? Yeah, it's a so so. Do you need a shot because you're just like, oh, or are you buying everybody around because you're so confident? And I'll start off with this one. Nils Lundqvist will be on the New York Rangers opening night roster, and I'm buying everybody around on that one right now. Here's the reason why. I think it's because he's going to impress everybody. I think he's just going to completely blow the doors off all of our expectations. And there's also no pressure on him. What are you going to do? Put him on the top power play unit? That's where they got the Norris Trophy winner right now. So I I mean, I, I just, I think he's going to come in, dazzle everybody in this preseason. And I, I don't think I'm going to be wrong, but I really hope I'm not going to be wrong. Anthony. Um, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to go beer. Uh, you know, I, I think it's, I think it takes defensemen a longer to adjust to the NHL game than forwards. It's always been the case. They take longer to develop. Um, I mean, there's exceptions to the rule, um, but uh, you know, I think the Rangers are in a, are a situation where um, they don't, they don't absolutely need him to come in right away and produce. Um, I, I think sometimes, certain players can benefit from playing in the minors or, or whatever the case may be. I think he has the skills to make the Rangers. There's no doubt about it, but if he's going to play, I think he's best suited playing top four minutes. If he's going to make the roster, do you really want him playing bottom six minutes? Um, yeah, you can and shelter him that way, or they could do what the Islanders did with Noah Dobson. Noah Dobson made the Islanders two years ago and the guy was a healthy scratch for the majority of the games. And he learned from the veterans and that's a way to develop someone too. So that that's a possibility. Um, really bright future to, for the Rangers. Um, I think he will be a very very good player. Um, I'm just not 100 percent convinced he's going to play every night. So that's why I'm going with a beer. Um, one thing I wonder about this, and I wonder out loud, if the pandemic actually helped his development because it, they didn't feel a need to rush him. They didn't rush him at all. He got here in. Uh, three years, he was the 2018 draft, and um, you 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 listen to his his interview, and he he just sounds like a kid that's matured very nicely. So, well, that's on our bar topic, talk, but yeah, you know, uh, that one's a little bit tough. I'm gonna say shot on that. Here's a here's the reason why I think rookie of the year talk is gonna be not coming from me. And that's because he's not going to get number one power play time. Uh, there are other guys that are going to be um, uh, more at cider. Uh, yeah, he's going to be coming yeah. up this year. He's he'll probably get number one power play time. Um, and well, actually, you know what? We'll get to that one in a minute because there's going to be other guys to talk about with that. The Sorokin Sisterkin rivalry will ignite this season, Mister Larocco. You're going out of order on me, mixing it up. <laughs> well, um, I had to keep it with the Islanders, the Rangers first. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know what? Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go around here. Uh, you know, this is this is a situation where you know Sorokin is gonna be his first full year. He's gonna play more, um, so that naturally is gonna come into the equation. Then there's the situation of the Olympics. You know, it's th th that spot, that third spot behind Varlamov and Vasilevsky is gonna come down to likely Sorokin or Shesterkin. Um, they're best friends, which adds a fun element to this, to this rivalry here. Um, so, and you know, let's face it. I think they're both going to be the elite goaltenders in this league. Um, there's, there's no doubt about it. They, they play different styles, but they're both immensely talented, uh, rival teams, Rangers, Islanders, um, you know, before long Sorokin's going to be front and center because he's going to take over for Varlamov. Uh, so I think it's just going to get better and better from here, especially with the Olympic aspect uh, to it. Um, so, yeah, I I'm looking forward to what both these guys are going to do going forward here. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to have to say beer first. The only reason why is because uh, Igor did not have his best games against the Islanders last season. 
Uh, I would love it if that's the case where it suddenly happens. And by the way, Simeon Varlamov and Alexander Georgiev are going to have something to say about it. Um, it's it's going to happen because, you know, good goalies are going to be good goalies. There aren't teams that just got their numbers. Like I always loved it when Islander fans said to me, oh, hey, we got Henrik's number. He has 30 wins against you in, fran- in the franchise history. Pretty sure Henrik Lundqvist wasn't too scared <laughs> of the Islanders. And this well, you know what? Team. Eventually, it, that's a motivating factor. I mean, after all, most blown saves Mariano Rivera had were against Boston Red Sox. Yeah. So and you're, you're going to get great players, especially when it's within division. And uh, if if it does blow up and it, it, it excites the rivalry, then great. You know, let's, let's keep it going. I, I got this from – because NHL on Twitter, I saw it was a couple of days ago, I had the, it said had a picture of Sorokin, Shesterkin. It was like, who gets the more wins? You know, and then everyone's commenting on it. So that's where I kind of pulled it from. Um, well, so. I think the answer on that's going to be Sisterkin because Sisterkin's going to get the starts. Yeah, he, you would think. Yes, he's he's gonna he's gonna play more. And then, albeit a smaller sample size, Sorokin had the better statistics of the two last season. So. Uh, and we had a better defensive team, a better yeah. defensive uh, coach team. I mean, we'll get all the factors. But again, Gerard Gallant's here. Keep on. I keep on saying <laughs> that's a big factor, guys. It is. All right, um, and we're going to go back to Lou Lamarillo on a different topic, but right now we have, we still have this one. Lou Lamarillo has one more move up his sleeve before the season starts. Anthony? You know what? I, a couple months ago, I, I would have said round. Um, I'm going beer, even though it's they have the hole on the left side that Nick Letty left, um, and everyone has been waiting for the other shoe to drop um, and for him to acquire a left-shot defenseman. You know, it was the, oh, well, they're not announcing the signings yet because, you know, he's working on a trade or, you know, he wants to sign his restricted free agents, Boville, Pelic, Sorokin. You know, all that happened um, and still nothing. So camps a little, you know, camps come around the corner here. Um, that still hasn't happened. So I'm a little worried about it. But um, at the same time, you know, trades sometimes happen, you know, before the season start. Eric Carlson uh, right before camp, uh, Max Pacioretty. Uh, and then who could forget oct- October 4th of 2014 when um, uh, Garcino traded Letty, traded Letty and, and Boychuk acquired him on the same day because um, teams needed to be cap compliant before the season starts. So you do see trades sometimes before the season starts, just the time's wearing thin. Um, but that that open spot is obvious. And, you know, you would think he would fill it and not leave it for a kid like Salo or or Sebastian Ajo. But uh, so, yeah, that, that's why I'm going beer. I'm not round anymore, but it, it does make sense for him to pull one more move off. Unfortunately, I'm going to go shot, um, and you can't see it. There's the angry shot guy. I got to make him a little bit larger. But um, the reason why I got to go with that is because it's it's kind of the, getting to the point of my team is on the floor. You mentioned Letty and Boychuk. Yes, you're right about that one. Uh, Chris Osgood coming to the New York Islanders in 2001. I remember that one. That was right at the end of September and the end of um, uh, the the preseason almost. And then his first game was against the Detroit Red Wings. So how about that? Yeah. Um, there, It's just I, I don't exactly know where the moves are. But you know what? Zidane Oshar is sitting there. Um uh, Jason Demaris is out there. There's going to be a lot of them. Signed, oh, a, signed a PTO with the Avalanche, thankfully. He's, he's, he's the missing piece in Colorado, exactly. And and you know what? And I hope that kid makes all the money he can. <laughs> but you might need to do it in ways that aren't hockey. Um, that's just my thought on that one. All right. Uh, there'll be a sizable trade before the season starts. And I, I'm actually getting down to beer on this. Uh, the reason why now, and it looks like it's actually right underneath Anthony's mouth as it foams up right there. Okay. Um, the <laughs> the um, the reason why I'm kind of getting skeptical about it is because it, a lot of teams are starting to set their rosters, and you don't want players coming in to camp that you're going to start moving. Uh, yes, it's happened before. Eric Carlson, uh, I think, was the latest one, as you just said. Uh, I mean, Danny Heatley in Ottawa, uh, uh, Letty and Boychuk, as you said. But I, I, you know, I, I'm looking at the situation. Jack Eichel's not going to get settled next next week. Oh. Um, 
Tarasenko is the only one I can really think of. So that's why I'm just going to say beer. Uh, he did not sign with them. He signed a PTO. He doesn't have a standard player player contract. Oh uh, yeah, you know I think he might have signed a one year deal. Did he? I thought it was a PTO. I thought it was a PTO. Oh. Uh, by sure. the way, by sure. by the way, if we no. uh, when we get to Q and A time and everything, we'll throw Steven on to talk about one quest. But um, but yeah, I'll look that up. Uh, but Anthony, give your answer on this. Um, beer. Uh, I, like you said, Eichel's not getting traded before the season starts. Um, Tarasenko, the Blues came out and said they expect he's going to be in camp. Um, I don't really see that happening anymore either. I think they're going to bank on him showing his shoulders healthy and then maybe, you know, trade him a little on down the road. Uh, but that doesn't mean that camp, there could be a trade that, you know, we obviously don't see coming that could happen. That's still possible. Um, like, you know, like you had mentioned, some teams don't want to mess with their chemistry as camps opening and stuff. But at the same time, before the first game is played, teams, that's when you need to be cap compliant. So there might be some teams that need to, you know, shed a contract and shake things up to be compliant. So that's still feasible. Um, I'm not saying it'll be a blockbuster, but, you know, I, I think you could get a, you know, let each type of trade shaking loose out of that equation. Um, so beer, but I'm not, I'm not like a hundred percent convinced on it. Oh yeah. He's signed with Colorado, but he also says, yeah, it was a PTO on that one. Yeah. Although, uh, uh, the more famous Jack Johnson was the bare knuckle boxer in the early <laughs> uh, 20th century. Um, one of the big RFAs will miss some regular season time. We'll start with you, Anthony. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to go, I'm going to go around here and say that Kaprizov does not, He's not here for the beginning of the season uh, unless things take a, you know, a drastic change and either Kaprizov um, or the wild have a change of heart on their stance. Um, then it's possible. But as of right now with how, you know, Russo kind of made it seem, um, I think it might be, you know, a while before he's here. And again, there's the element that he's not even in the United States. He's still in Russia. So that takes some time too. Um, so uh, I'm going to go around. I could easily be wrong. As far as everyone else, Pedersen, Hughes, Kachuk, um, I think they might miss some camp time like Barzell did last season, but I, I'd be surprised if any of them missed any games. I'm going to go around to uh, – we use the words one of, so all we got to do is just have one of five be right. Um, that, that, that's great odds for us. But uh, the I it, I think it's going to be a caprice off. I just it, it, there's going to be red tape that's going to get him slow him down here. I don't think he's going to be there opening night, so we'll see about that. And it's a shame because it's going to be the first opening night in two years where fans are back in. Yes, and yes. By the way, Dave, the first the first black heavyweight, and a matter of fact, uh, I'm trying to remember what the name of the Great White Hope was, but <laughs> I mean, Jack Johnson, he was he was a hell of a bo uh, boxer. All right, going to some of the the bad teams. Arizona's combination of Hutton and Kozinar. That's the way you pronounce it. Yeah. All right. That that tandem <laughs> is worse than Buffalo's tandem of Craig Anderson and Aaron Dell. Yeah, I'm buying everybody around on this one. <laughs> I mean, you're talking about two goalies that were um in Buffalo. They're well, first off, Hutton was the backup in Buffalo or 50-50, like 50. 40 split yeah, uh, was, something like that where the other 10% went. I have no idea, but it's just uh, Hutton. He's better as a backup anyway. It, like he was when he was a, with St. Louis. I don't even know what the other guy is going to give you, but Anderson and Dell uh, Anderson was the third string goalie on, on uh, the capitals last year. And he, he, he even started a playoff game, but uh, and Aaron Dell, uh, he's, Never really taking that next step after uh, San Jose. So, yeah, I got to say, they're going to be worse over in Arizona. Yeah, this the, it's just all this is ugly right here. I mean, Craig Anderson, uh, I mean, he's, what, 43 years old? Um, I don't. Yeah, I, I mean, if you're 43, you're terrible. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know if he's an NHL caliber goalie anymore. Um, Aaron Dell. Like you said, after he somewhat looked promising in San Jose, he's not very good. Um, so I, I, I really struggle with this. I really, uh, I really struggle with. It. I don't. 
they're both tire fires. They're both going to really compete for Shane Wright. Um, but <clears throat> Carter Hutton, I mean, at least he's got age on his side compared to Anderson, and, and Kozinar is is still young. I mean, he's on. Man, um, you know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go shot. Oh wow! I thought we were doing buying around, but there we go. There's uh, we lost the shot guy. What's going with that kinda, one? I just kind of convinced myself there. I, I guess I don't know. I think Anderson's done. I mean, and Dell's not. I don't. I. It's just like it's really ugly all around. <laughs> I guess because Kozenar is a little young, he hasn't really had a cup of tea yet. Um, and Hutton, you know, is younger and had some success in like St. Louis. And so, but yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a shot, but I'm still, it's still a very ugly situation in goal for Arizona. All right. Well, once again, we'll bring up the little angry shot, man. But yeah, like I said, I got to fix that. All right. Um, Move it on. Okay, going back to the banners. Quinton Byfield will win the Calder Trophy. Anthony, you first. You know, I'm going to go around here. Um, wow. I, I think uh, based on this year's draft, how all the top players are basically either playing at Michigan, it seems, or not playing in the NHL this year. Uh, Willie Mecklen on San Jose. I, I I don't think he's going to play for them this year. Um so you're talking rookies from previous classes and Byfield, you know, you're talking about second overall pick center big. Um, he's got a lot of tools in his toolbox. You know, you would think he's going to get the playing time in LA uh, behind Kopitar and Dano. Um, you know, and I just don't really see anybody that's, you know, Marco Rossi on Minnesota. It's possible. Um, you know, so there's that element. Uh, then you have, uh, Nadelkovic is still eligible actually because he didn't play enough games. So, I mean, that he was already a finalist, so that could happen. Um, Cole Caulfield, I mean, he's really, yeah, that's the one, that's the one guy that I think that I think can compete, uh, for Byfield. And I know based on how he played in the playoffs, you would, you could easily say he probably has the edge, but I've always liked Byfield. I actually was a proponent of the Rangers taking Byfield over Lafreniere just because of. They needed help at center ice uh, and because he's also very, very skilled. It's not like the, the talent margin between Lafreniere and Byfield was extreme because I know normally you never draft. You always draft the best player available in hockey. But being that the gap really isn't that wide, I thought Byfield was the pick there. So I've always been very high on him. Um, and again, I think he has all the tools to be a really, really good player. So. No disrespect to Caulfield because he could easily win it. But in my opinion, I think it's going to be Byfield. Uh, I'm going to go beer. And the reason why now, by the way, uh, whoop, sorry, uh, the Rasmus Kapari or Alex Turcott. I mean, I would love it if Byfield is good. That could free up an, a possible trade at Turcott uh, and the Rangers should try to go after him. Um, but I'm, I'm going to go with the beer on this. As a matter of fact, I'll use it, this one right there. So I'm, I'm not blocking out your face. Now I'm blocking out mine. <laughs> there you go. Um, I'm going to go beer. Cause I, there's, there's going to be a rookie that we're not talking about. I mean, cider in Detroit is one of them. Uh, there's, I mean, yeah. Alex Adelkovich came out of nowhere. Nobody was thinking about him for mm -hmm. rookie of the year. Uh, Vitaly Kratsov, I believe, still has rookie eligibility, even though he played yeah. 11 games. So uh, that's going to be interesting. And, um, and I just Z don't know if Byfield's going to get the playing time. Though. He's going to put up the numbers. Trevor he's got Zegris. power play time stuff. Two. Sorry, go Trevor ahead, Andy. Trevor Zegris, Anaheim. Trevor Zegris, there's one. Okay. Really, really good. Yep. Yeah, I mean, because sometimes these guys win rookie of the year because they're on bad teams getting all the ice time. Yeah. So um that's where you can always just just look with those. But guys, what do you think? Uh think Nils Lundqvist is gonna be on the New York Rangers opening night roster. Can he challenge Quentin Byfield for the rookie of the year? Uh Sorokin versus Astorkin. The rivalry begins. Question mark. Um, Lou got another trick up his sleeve. One of the UFAs gonna be missing time. And of course, is there going to be a humongous trade before? <laughs> the uh the season begins throw it all down in the comments below just like uh 
Just like this idiot keeps on telling you to. Yes. I just. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.